God damn it! Jason fucking Garrett. Seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Yeah. Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Yeah. Exactly. But we actually had a good thing. What? Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods here on this Taco Tuesday. And I hope all your taco dreams come true. Um, in a few hours from now, we will be going to Rashid's memorial service, and I tell you, I miss him so much. You know, Rashid used to get up underneath your skin and drive you crazy because it was constantly pounding on the Cowboys that the Cowboys are trash. Dak Prescott is a dink and dunker and everything else, and I miss listening to all that. And that he would take Daniel Jones over Dak Prescott. But Rashid, you know, a lot of you guys really didn't know Rashid. Rashid was really a good friend. You know, he saved our draft trip because we could not get the Wi-Fi working out when we were trying to do the TV screen on that draft trip, which is the first experience I had with him. And the Giants winning the last two weeks since he's passed have been some of the craziest wins that you've ever seen. You thought for sure, you know, I, I said, I'm a giant fan for the rest of the year in honor of my buddy Rashid. And last week when they kicked the field goal, you know, they're about to kick the field goal, you know, now well, that didn't help the Giants at all. And the field goal kick seemed like it went up and just like somebody pushed it. Uh-uh. And they won, getting their second game, second win in a row. And then last night, having the Green Bay Packers go down there after Saquon has an incredible run, gets tripped up, falls on the ground, fumbles. Green Bay gets it down there almost in the red zone, scores a touchdown, and there's less than two minutes left. And an unsung hero, Tommy DeVito, that we joked <clears throat> calling him... <coughs> excuse me, Danny DeVito leads him down in field goal range to win the game. It's like two improbable victories. What's so crazy is how we used to hear things like, I'll take Daniel Jones over Dak Prescott. Daniel Jones this season has two TD passes before he got injured and six interceptions. That giant team looked like it was going to get Brian Diabold fired. And now with Tommy DeVito, a guy still living at home with his mama who cooks chicken cutlets for him. They're ready when he gets home that washes his clothes and makes up his bed. I bet she puts a piece of candy. I bet she puts a piece of candy on his pillow, too. Don't know if she reads my bedtime story. But that guy right now is three and one with the same Giants team that couldn't get out of their way. The team is responding to them. And I wish Rashid was here to enjoy this. But I hope that him and Stuart Morrison are looking down and enjoying. It's crazy. Because now if you are the Philadelphia Eagles, Here's the crazy thing about football. You'll remember, I remember, I'm old enough to remember this NFL season when the Dolphins beat Denver 70 to 20. And people were saying, oh my God, the Miami Dolphins, they are, they're, un, they're unbeatable. They're getting all their cold weather games out the way early. They'll be playing in Miami. They, they, they could just run away with the AFC. Do y'all remember that? Tua, Tariq Hill. And then Tariq Hill gets hurt 
And they used him more like a decoy in the second half. I was surprised he came back. And without Tariq Hill, Tua looked like some ass ass. The Miami Dolphins at home against a Titan team with a rookie, Will Levis, had a 14-point lead because the Titans spotted them two touchdowns late in the game by fumbling the kick returns. That's the only way they got in the end zone. And they are the first team since 1976 to lose a game after leading by 14 plus points with less than three minutes remaining. They gave up two touchdowns to Will Levis. Will frickin' Levis. Now, I can't seem to get something out of my head. With Rashid, Rashid used to be right there. Rashid, when he got sick, we brought him into the house here. You know, he stayed with us from March all the way until he ended up having to have his leg amputated. And I don't have any, didn't have any more bedrooms and things. And he needed to be in a space where he could get in because the bathroom's here on this one level and stuff. So we ended up having a bed right there for him. So every morning when I would come down, that's when I really got to know Rashid and having conversations because he was always awake in the morning when I got here. Rashid's totally different when we're not in the middle of, you know, the, the gamemanship uh, of, of football. But just having real conversations with Rashid and stuff. And he had evolved with the Cowboys and with Dak Prescott. And he's like, Dak is a good quarterback. And he would say, if the Cowboys make the Super Bowl, I will root for the Cowboys. Now, I don't know. I, 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 things change so quickly in the NFL because... If you look back at when Denver lost to Miami and everybody was saying, oh, my God, the Dolphins, they're going to be just running right straight through to the Super Bowl. Now you look at them and say, well, I don't know. I don't know. It's possible that Buffalo could catch them. I don't I don't know. But that's how crazy it is, because Denver Sean Payton was the joke of the NFL. And now all of a sudden, Denver is only one game back of Kansas City playing great football. Two weeks ago, we had Jalen Hurts as the number one contender for MVP, the Eagles with home field advantage seemingly almost locked up and now you're looking at an eagle team that's battered and bruised and has been molly two weeks in a row and their statement is well we got the easiest schedule going down the stretch here we got the giants twice yeah well the green bay packers last night had turned things around and they were sitting there in a playoff position and that giant team found a way to win on a three-game win streak. And if you don't think that the New York Giants, to make their season two, Brian Diabold, to make sure he solidifies coming back, that Tommy DeVito trying to stake his claim for a piece of that pie for the quarterback position, knowing that Daniel Jones has tore his ACL and won't be ready until about the middle of the season, and being a very cheap alternative to Daniel Jones having eight TDs and two interceptions in four games. If you don't think that that team wouldn't like to hurt the Eagles, you got another thing coming. Things change so quick in the NFL. So quick. The road ain't that easy as they make it sound like. Seattle without Geno they're not the same team. But they're going to be playing at home, playing desperate to try and hold on to a chance to make the playoffs. That place is like being inside a jet engine, sound-wise. And you've got a shell shock team right now that's questioning themselves in the Eagles, having to go there. 
then has to play their division rival, which is hard to beat a team two times in one season. Those games, it doesn't matter what the records are. They're always close. So you just don't know when it comes to the NFL. Now, today is Tuesday. The players are off. We got good news, at least as far as Hankins goes, because when you see a guy carted off, you're not thinking that that guy's, that you're thinking his season is done. It seems like it's a high ankle sprain that's mild. He could be back, they'll definitely be back by playoffs. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Well, uh, Jim, I think we can talk about playoffs right now. I, I think we can talk about playoffs. Now, shout out to the San Francisco 49ers who have now clinched the playoff spot. Congratulations. Now, get a step. Eagle fans, woo. Maybe you shouldn't talk about playoffs right now because this was your team. Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse <laughs> performance in the second half. Horse, horse shit. Totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Speaking coaching, of horse shit. Our, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. Okay. Speaking of horse shit, didn't one of you Eagle fans eat some horse shit? Oh, okay. Just checking for a friend. So things change quickly in the NFL. Now the Cowboys, we have a another team that's desperate. Buffalo at home. They're two and a half point favorites. We're the underdog. And playing in Buffalo is not uh, a place you want to be in December. But sometimes in life, sometimes in life, you get lucky. And that's what it takes sometimes in the NFL. It takes being lucky, playing a team at the right time. Buffalo, I've been watching their weather since Saturday. Now, it, it's, it's ticking a little bit, okay? Because now, understand, it's only Tuesday. Long range forecasts are, it's hard, okay? It's hard. It's hard to predict one week to the next what the NFL teams are. It's even harder to predict what the weather's going to be. Today in Buffalo, it's windy, 40 degrees, 31 is the low temperature. This is not like your dad's Buffalo back in the day where you'd always see Jim Kelly there in the blizzard. Tomorrow, 34 and 29. Thursday, a warming trend of 42 and 32. Friday, 45 and 40. Saturday, cloudy, 43 and 37. And right now, at the moment, the warmest day, now it has ticked from 48 to 47, now down to 46. 46 and 39. If you give me weather like that in Buffalo, Cowboys being an indoor team, they don't like the cold. But that, my friends, if you get that in Buffalo, you might be looking and saying, somebody is smiling down on the Dallas Cowboys. So last night, again, You've got Buffalo in New York, where the weather's not going to be quite as frightful. And now you have a Miami Dolphins team that I want to see if the talking heads talk about the Miami Dolphins. Their biggest win or best team that they faced, they weren't the best team when they faced them. Right now it's the Denver Broncos. It's the best win they have. Every team they've played with the winning record, they've lost to. I'm curious if they will be talking about them not beating good teams or not. Teams had won 767 consecutive games when in that position before last 
night. So, one immediately asks the question. We got a Dolphins team that was trending towards being the one seed, and they're playing at a home where they're practically unbeatable, and they got a 14-point lead, which is practically unblowable. Yeah. How the actual heck did that happen? That was Ravens-esque in the way that they found a way to lose the game that they had completely under control. Mike Vrabel does that to a team every year. It feels like knocks off a highly ranked team when they shouldn't. So, I'm not all the way out on the Dolphins just yet, but the Tyreek Hill hobbling around is scary. Well, let's get to that, right? Like, he goes out early with an ankle injury. He comes back in, but he's clearly not himself. Are they right. using him as a decoy? Hey, he caught a couple balls. He's, he's an absolute miracle. But the fact is their, their offense is not remotely the same without him. You know, for the last couple weeks, I've been thinking, no wide receivers ever won MVP. Is it ridiculous to think about this guy as MVP if he breaks the single season receiving record? After last night, I don't think it is. I, I think last night served as proof of how valuable Tyreek Hill is. And in a year, if, if no quarterback's going to separate himself, if he does get healthy and break that record, I think he's got a good chance. Yeah, Graz, there's very few receivers that you can pluck off a team and see how much it can impact the team as oh. Tyreek did last night. He came back into that game and made a couple catches, and I'm like, holy cow. Yeah. Everyone's telling me that he can't win the MVP, but he showed you just how valuable he is to that team. And honestly, for me, it was just a sack there at the end by Tua. In the big-time games, when they need him to create... Yeah. That is where he tends to struggle just a little bit. I saw him throughout this game try to scramble, do a couple things with his feet, but right there, it did look like he had two left feet. You, you, we, you, <laughs> Fox was making the point about Vrabel and, and having these type of games. Here's the deal. Armstead, their left tackle. Hunt was out of the game. They had 18 pressures on two and, and five sacks. They had that's a, they had 11 for the most of the season. Mm -hmm. They made two it, though, outside the numbers. Like, the game plan that the Titans implemented was very effective, especially just get it to once it. Hill was taken out of the game because that explosive nature that he brings to that offense, it made Tua look very average last night. He looked like he did, he wasn't on time. The rhythm of this offense matters. Like the Dolphins, it's always in time. When Tua's foot hits the ground, the ball's coming out. Last night, that did not happen, and you saw the vulnerability of the Dolphins. And on the other side, the Dolphins' defense couldn't get pressure in big moments. If yeah. you look back at those replays, those big plays that Will Levis was making, he was chilling in the pocket. Yeah. He was finding more time, creating time, and it goes back to that Phillips injury, and they're, no they're not a, a blitz-heavy team but they got to find a way to get pressure on quarterbacks. Dolphins still get the one seed if they win out because they're going to play Baltimore. Yep. But their schedule is rough. And I wonder, this is a game where they made a lot of mistakes, right? Yep. I go back to even the first half, Bradley Chubb throwing his helmet and giving him a first down that leads to a touchdown. It, they could either galvanize themselves and yep. learn from this, this bad game they had and run through the rest of their schedule and get that one seed, or it could be a bad sign of things to come. Yeah, Jeff, you know this as an offensive lineman. The health of that offensive line is the, the key priority no for doubt. the Miami Dolphins, along with Tyreek Hill. Yeah. They had no sacks last week. Right. They score 45 points. They give up five this week. You see mm -hmm. what happens. But we got to show some love to Will Levis yeah. as well. I oh, mean, yeah. Will Levis 14. played good. This man threw a, a, a thick pick six, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think the game you think, it, you think it's over. No, he comes back. They're down 14. And you know how many quarterbacks have more explosive plays than Will Levis since he became a starter? Tell me. Three. Mm. Talk about Brock Purdy, C.J. Stroud, and Dak Prescott. Oh. So in those big moments, he had ice in his veins. He was ready for it. Mm -hmm. You saw that reaction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my man, you can put all the mayo in your coffee you want, but <laughs> got ready. ice in the veins. There's ready. fire in there. Too, One more thing everybody. I want to bring up to my man, Dominique, who is my uh, my analytic <coughs> maven. People always, you said it on the call this morning, the old heads always question going for the two when you're down 14. Last night, Mike Vrabel showed you why it's the right thing to do. That linebacker has a calculator, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want to give your team the best chance to win, and that is an aggressive move to make. We've gotten to a position where I think a lot of us accept that that's a smart move, and it's not the risky move anymore. There was a time when we were judging but if they lose in that situation, I wonder how we react this morning. Playing a win, you are not playing mm -hmm. high. Right. right. Tie the game, you could lose on a coin flip, and nobody wants that. It's absolutely the right move. I'm glad it worked, because yeah. now there's something to point to when people go, why did he do that? That's why. That's, exactly That's why. There why. you go. The Dolphins stunned. That's it. The Dolphins stunned. Stunned. By that game last night. Wow. And that's where it all goes back to. It is just crazy how quickly things change in the NFL. From literally one week to the next, you just don't know. And as great as that win was for us to get the Eagles off our back, the reality is 
the reality is, is it's just one more game, just one more game in the grand scheme of things. And you just don't know. So with that being said, we're going to be leaving out of here. And I want to end this on a great note. Um, thank everybody for all of the thoughts and prayers for Rashid and his family and things. And let him know. You make a good antenna. <laughs> Love y'all finish. Y'all good, man. Y'all make good antenna. <laughs> Don't get on top of that booty giant thing. Girl, get on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. It's a hell of a tough roof. It's a giant fan. It's on top of the roof. And we got a better picture now because I'm on top of the world. <laughs> He's on top of the roof. He's on top of the roof. He's going to fly off. He's going to be the ornament. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm going to get rid of you. All the way back home. That's right. Giant fan's on top of the roof. Yeah. And you know, Spam the comments, please. You know why I'm doing this? To give you guys some pleasure. Because you guys have picked poorly. So you can laugh at me because you guys still suck. Okay. <laughs> New York State and Jazz fan just got on the roof of the RB for you guys. Hey, for you. Need some happiness in your life. <laughs> y'all were miserable last night. Y'all pulled out of that stadium. Y'all was moving. Put your head hanging down. God damn it, Jill. You been to it, pick again. I'm going to y'all smile. Put a smile. Wait, wait until week two. Wait till week two. Week two, yeah. Get on the happy face, y'all. This is for y'all. Y'all made me an instant celebrity. I want to thank y'all. This is why I did this. Y'all made me an instant celebrity. Week two, you won't be happy. Hey. Who, who's going to block Saquon? We're picking him up in the draft, buddy. This too love and hate your fail. Woo! Hey, Josh Smith is out to kill himself. <laughs> hey, we try to make, we try to make, we try to make work. Josh Smith is out to kill himself. Hey, yeah, he up there doing it for the fans, doing it for the fans. Jump, 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 j